America is expanding rapidly. Cornelius Vanderbilt's railroads have united the country, and commerce now moves faster than ever. But America's newest obsession is light, clean, safe light, the kind provided by John D. Rockefeller. Oil is changing the world and the Ohio refiner is leading the charge. The titans of that day revolutionized business in America. We became the sort of dominant economic force in the world because we could make stuff, we could create stuff, we could build stuff, we could power stuff. John Rockefeller's Standard Oil is now the largest producer of refined kerosene in the country. And his exclusive deal with Vanderbilt allows him to ship his product to homes throughout the country at incredibly cheap rates. But for Rockefeller, it isn't enough. He's outgrown his deal with Vanderbilt. Once unable to fill Vanderbilt's trains, now he has more oil than the Commodore can possibly ship. And Vanderbilt's biggest competitor knows it. Tom Scott is the president of one of the largest train lines in the country. He wants to take Vanderbilt's place as king of the railroads. And he knows a deal with Rockefeller is the key. Scott heads to Cleveland with his protege, a young up-and-comer named Andrew Carnegie. As Scott's most trusted lieutenant, Carnegie has helped craft the pitch. What I'm proposing is an alliance between... You want a cartel between oil and railroads? I prefer to call it by... Give me the numbers. Standard Oil will receive a 40% rebate for every barrel it ships. We'll send papers over in the morning. No. A verbal contract is fine. Rockefeller gets a better deal from Scott than he ever could have gotten from Vanderbilt. The Commodore has lost his competitive edge. To the great frustration of Vanderbilt, Rockefeller very skillfully played those railroads against each other. Oil was something Rockefeller couldn't afford to let go. And so they fought very hard to get that traffic. The Commodore has created a monster. He realizes that the only way to combat Rockefeller is for the railroads to start working together. He forms an unlikely alliance with his biggest rival, Tom Scott. And together, they agree to pull all of Rockefeller's deals. Rockefeller, 
the move is nothing short of a declaration of war. America is emerging as one of the mightiest nations on Earth. The country is now crowded with rail lines, and kerosene lights most homes. The amazing evolution has been led by two men driven by a desire to create a world that few imagined. Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt and John D. Rockefeller have sparked the modernization of the country. But the former partner's interests are no longer aligned. Vanderbilt has formed an unlikely alliance with Tom Scott, aimed at forcing their biggest client to pay going rates. John Rockefeller sees their actions as a declaration of war. And he's not going down without a fight. Rockefeller is determined to find another way to transport his oil. He knows if he can't, the railroads will win. Rockefeller's solution again comes from the most unlikely of places. So we can increase the yield of the kerosene, but then we get more of the volatile waste. We can burn some of it off as fuel in the refinery, but its high flammability creates a storage problem. refinery is moved using large pipes and Rockefeller realizes if those pipes can transport oil over short distances they could also be used over longer distances if Rockefeller can build a pipeline large enough he'll be able to cut the railroads out of the oil business for good pipeline will require a massive investment and incredible risk. But if he gets it right, Rockefeller will be able to do what he loves to do most, win. It probably comes early in an entrepreneur's life where you realize you're willing to do things in the business world that other people aren't willing to do. Everybody has got ideas and everybody's got ambitions but most people aren't willing to cross that line. And I think an entrepreneur that's successful, that's your nature. Wherever there's change, wherever there's uncertainty, there's opportunity. Rockefeller's workers labor around the clock, blasting through the countryside and laying over a mile and a half of pipeline every day. Business, in the end, is understanding the playing field. Tell me who's on it, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and what is your checkmate play to top them and nail them. 
And so you're always in that competitive game. You're looking at innovation. You're looking at leapfrogging, trying to get ahead of them. You're never complacent. You're semi-paranoid about what they're doing. That's what a game is all about. By the time the pipeline is complete, it's over 4,000 miles long, stretching across Ohio and Pennsylvania and connecting thousands of the world's most lucrative oil wells directly to Rockefeller's refineries. John Rockefeller has finally found his way to eliminate the railroads from the oil business. And in the process, he's forever revolutionized the way oil is transported.